1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. Hallelujah. I know some of you are cold and some of you are hot. We're trying to figure out the weather outside and the weather inside. Hallelujah. I got 66 on that one. I feel good, but y'all probably freezing. See if I can encourage some response. When I'll get a little warmer, just throw a hand up. Get a little warmer, do a little dance in the presence of the Lord. First Corinthians, that's why I get so hot up here. I can't hardly sit still on some of that. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. I'm not going to bring to you some great revelation today. I'm simply going to obey the Holy Ghost. So if you have expectations today, I hope your expectations are in Jesus. Because he said there was going to be deliverance today, and I believe him. There's going to be deliverance in this house today. 1 Corinthians 2, 1 through 5. And I, brethren... When I came to you, count came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God, for I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. This coming from the scholar of the Old Testament. This coming from the brain of Jesus' bunch. The 13th Apostle. <laughs> Baker Stuss. This guy knew a lot of stuff. He had a lot of knowledge concerning the Word. But he said, I determined that as good as that knowledge is, I'm not going to sit here and debate with you about what the Scripture says about Jesus. Instead, I'm going to show you Jesus. I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. There's a whole bunch of smooth talkers out there. But he said you'll know them by their fruit. In the end, there's going to be some that will do signs and do wonders. But that power they're working in ain't his power. You better know them by their fruit. Not by their gift. But by their fruit. By their fruit. In Mark chapter 16, verses 14 through 18. After he appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat and upbraided them, this nice, loving, kind, gentle Jesus just scolded them. That word literally means to chide, to rebuke. He railed at them. He even, the, the word interpret, he taunted them. We don't read everything he said, but maybe he says something like, Really? Three and a half years, I raised up Lazarus, I raised up a few more. You didn't think I could get up? I told you. He upbraided them. Out of everybody else in the world, you were with me night and day for three and a half years. He upbraided them with their unbelief and their hardness of heart. Because they believed not them on them which had seen him after he was risen. And said unto them, now he upbraided them, scolded them pretty good. And then he said, now go. Go ye into all the world. Preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. 
But he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Every once in a while, we need a good scolding to shake us for a second. Wait a minute. In other words, I I told you I was going to do it. I told you I'd be right back. Now, since I've proven myself to you, now go get busy. Now that we got past this little, ro- this little roadblock of your faith, go get busy. Get busy. I want to preach just for a little bit, minister on this subject, these signs. These signs. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we worship you, Father. We bless your name. We magnify you. We glorify you. We want your perfect will in this house. Father, I know what you spoke to my spirit. I pray, oh God, that you would release that angelic host to begin to move in this congregation even now. Lord Jesus, let those angels begin to minister and let the host begin to war against every spirit and stronghold in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let every spirit that's not of you, every unclean and every foul spirit be bound in the name of the Lord Jesus. Come on, church. The Holy Ghost is already beginning to move. Come on, church. In the name of the Lord Jesus. These signs shall follow them that believe. They shall speak with new tongues. They're going to cast out devils. Would you serve some devil's notice? You're on your way out. In the name of the Lord Jesus, you may be seated in Jesus' name. He upbraided them and corrected them. It said for the hardness of their heart. That literally interprets the destitution of spiritual perception. And I said, what in the world does destitution mean? Spiritual perception poverty. In other words, they had no discernment. They could not perceive by the Spirit what was taking place. And he walked right in on them and then upbraided them. A quick reminder, I never left you. I've never forsaken you. Said he upbraided them for their hardness of heart, lack of discernment, and unbelief, faithlessness, disbelief, those that were without faith. And it comes from the word pistos, which means infidel or unbeliever. He's talking to those that were with him for three and a half years. He walks in the room, and just because they didn't believe one report from one of them, he says, you might as well be an unbeliever. Shake yourself. You're not an unbeliever. You've walked with me. I'm here. I've proven myself. Now get up and go. In Luke chapter 4, verse 38 through 41. And he arose out of the synagogue and entered into Simon's house. And Simon's wife's mother was taken with a great fever. And they besought him for her. And he stood over her and rebuked the fever. And it left her. How you feeling, son? You good? Good. I was studying the scripture, and, and my wife said, Judah's got a fever. And, and I'm going to tell you, all I heard all night last night was casting out devils. Casting out devils. I begin my study by looking for devils to cast out. <laughs> casting out devils. I'm thinking what devils are here and what devils need to go. And Judah was sick and started to get a fever a low-grade fever. And you know how we do. Well, it's a low-grade fever, so it's probably doing its job. It's okay. With it. It's not like it's inflamed. And then I, I'm just studying along, 
and I come right on across there. Jesus didn't let the fever do its job. <laughs> if I'm going to be like Jesus, I don't need to let the fever do its job. I need to go on ahead and intervene and rebuke the fever, and whatever else was with it had to immediately go. The fever was working within the, your body was trying to do its job, but it needed a little help. And so the creator of man stepped up and said, Go in the name of Jesus. The fever and the sickness left. And she immediately arose and began to minister to them. Stop excusing devils. We got to stop excusing devils. America needs to stop excusing devils. We've labeled them. We've named them. We've gave them pet names. You know how hard it is to get rid of a pet once you've named it? You got those chickens and you were going to cook them up and have a good dinner. And then somebody had to go name one George. And when it came time to eat and daddy come for the chicken, everybody's like, don't kill George. But we got to eat and that's what we bought him for. And it's time to say, but not George. We named that old thing. And so the Bible says that a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. Why? Because the interpretation is a two-spirited man is unstable in all of his ways. Don't go calling it bipolar. There's two spirits at work in that person. They need deliverance in the name of the Lord Jesus. Don't dismiss it as a symptom or a problem or just an antidotal thing. Drugs ain't going to fix it. Jesus will remove it. He said, and he cast out those devils, and they went crying out. And one interpretation said he expelled them. The other interpretation said he ejected them. I like it. This plane is moving at one speed, and you don't belong here. He ejected them. He ejected them. He rebuked the fever. It left her. Immediately she arose and ministered to him. Now when the, when the sun was setting, all they uh, that had any sick with divers diseases brought them unto him. And, man, this man makes a fever go away. That don't make sense to us, but he made a fever. And they start bringing everybody. And he laid his hands on every one of them and healed them. And devils also came out of many crying out and saying, Thou art Christ, the Son of God. And he rebuking them, suffered them not to speak, for they knew that he was Christ. In Matthew 8 and 16, it went on to repeat the same area. and says, When the evening was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirits with his word. You ain't got to go wrestle a spirit. You don't have to get it in an arm hold. It ain't the person that's the problem. It's the spirit that it's got to go. And by his word, it had to be ejected. He ejected it. In Luke 10, 17 through 20, he done told them what they were supposed to do. These signs are going to follow you that believe me. You're going to cast out devils. You're going to speak with new tongues. In fact, you're going to lay hands on the sick and they're going to recover. And if you, now he didn't say go on and play with some snakes and drink some poisons and try this on to see if that kills you and try that one to see if that kills you. No, he said, basically that interprets if you happen to drink something poisonous. Thank God for interpretation. I'm not going to go hand on no snake. Put a foot on his head. Put a shotgun in his ear. I ain't going to play with him. Test and tempt the Lord. But if you happen to. He says they won't harm you. They won't harm you. And that's why Paul could shake it off in the fire. Because it had already been spoken out of Jesus' mouth. They will not hurt you. He didn't go reaching there, reaching for no serpent. He was doing the work of God and it came out. It came out and bit him. And then he shook it off. Because the Lord said it won't hurt me. Shake it off. 
You pray for somebody, are you healed yet? No, let's do it again. Why? Because Jesus said when I pray for you, you should be healed. So let's just stay here a moment and we'll do a little toe touch and I'll tag your head and call on the name of Jesus. Is it gone yet? 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 I'm going to practice what he preached. I'm going to do what he said do because he said if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. If you cast them out, they'll go. Then in Luke chapter 10, 17 through 20, they got excited. The 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And one interpretation said, with your power, even the devils submit to us. Sometimes I wonder, are we too much in a hurry to cast them into the pit? Come on to her and go bring me a Pepsi. Come out of him and bring me some money. I don't know. He said they got to submit. What's wrong with your holy imagination? The devil had the money long enough. And you're struggling. And there's a devourer eating your funds. Why don't you stand up and say, devourer, I give unto the Lord. You can't touch my funds. And cast him out of your funds. Cast out devils. Tell them to go. Well, that's just life. If it's going to happen to anybody, it's going to happen to me. Don't you dare pet that devil. Don't pet pet that devil. Cast him out. And Jesus, we just talked about him ejecting. Jesus, when they come back and they're all excited. and Man, they ain't got the Holy Ghost yet. But he prayed over them that they would have this power, and they walked in it. In Luke 10, 17 through 20, verse 18, he said to him, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. I've ejected him before. I've seen him when he went sailing through the skies when I thumped him out of heaven. It didn't take a great army. It didn't take fasting and prayer. All I had to do was speak the word, and he was gone. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you, notwithstanding in this rejoice not that spirits are subject unto you because they should be. Rejoice not that they're subject unto you. Don't be surprised. They should be. Why? Because I gave you power. And if I give you power, exercise it by faith, knowing that I'm walking with you. I'm working with you. My power is sufficient. Come on, exercise your power. But rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. They come to him one time and said, Jesus, there's some other folks. John said it. There's some other folks casting out devils in your name. He said, that's good. If they're not against us, they're for us. But he didn't say nothing about their name being written. There's going to be some. He said, and they call me Lord, Lord. We cast out devils in your name. We healed the sick in your name. They were, they were smart enough to believe what he said. And where they could get the thrill of exercising in his power. But then he said, I had to say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Because I never knew you. I never had a relationship with you. You used my name. You used my power. You used my spirit. But you didn't talk to me. You didn't have a relationship with me. You didn't do whatsoever I commanded you. You took advantage of the king. And one day the king's going to say, I never knew you. You might have looked all hot down here. But when you got up there, you couldn't even get in. I never knew you. Luke chapter 8, 1 through 3. And it came to pass afterward that he went throughout their city, every city and village, preaching and showing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God. And the twelve were with him. And certain women, which had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary called Magdalene, out of whom went seven. 
out of whom went seven devils. And it even says in Mark 16, 9 through 11, now when Jesus was risen, uh, was risen early the first day of the week, he appeared first to whom? Mary. Out of whom he expelled seven devils. Why did he go to Mary first? Out of all the disciples, out of all 12 of them, out of all 500, whatever gathered, why was it Mary that he appeared to first? Maybe, we don't read about when it happened, but just maybe she might have been the first one he expelled some devils from. It might have been her somewhere after the wedding at Cana that he started ministering and expelling. Maybe he, she was the first he cast out devils from, and so he thought she ought to be the first when he rose in power. When he revealed himself, maybe, maybe it was time since I cast devils out of her first and she's been faithful ever since. I'm going to let her be the first to see me in my glory. She had faith enough. She had faith enough that I could command devils to go and they would go. She didn't accuse me of casting out devils by devils. She had faith that I was who I said I was and the devils had to go. And she said, Jesus, get them out. And they left. So since you first believed in me, Mary, you're going to be the first I, do, I show myself to. Now, seven devils. Seven devils. Can you imagine the conversations going on in her head? Seven devils talking to her. There will not be no extra voices in your head. The only voices you should have is your conscience and the Holy Ghost. Anybody else is an invader. Anybody else don't belong there. Anybody else needs to be expelled or ejected. Don't call it schizophrenia and start petting it. Don't give a drug to try to seduce it or, or belay it or stop it. Instead, call on the name of Jesus and you can tell it to go. All seven of you, depart from my mind and my spirit. Jesus is here. And when Jesus is here, anything can happen. Anything can happen. Anything can happen. And if that wasn't bad enough, in Luke chapter 8, we read about a man that was in the tombs. And he, would, he could break chains. And he had unusual strength and power. Holy Ghost said, in this hour I have to start demonstrating. And my people have to f trust me to demonstrate. Because they're too busy watching werewolves and witches. And Come on. They want to sit in front of the tube and see some dead looking dude bite somebody else in the neck and blood squirt out everywhere. Uh huh. They want to see them put their teeth in their neck and suck on it. Come on now. We can sit in front of that horrible, disgusting stuff. But come into the house of God and somebody starts speaking in tongues and going, now that's weird. Speaking in tongues is weird. Excuse me? You enjoy watching people suck blood out of people? You enjoy watching people eat brains? You enjoy the fear and the challenge of the walking dead? What we need are some saints to become walking dead. Not dead to Jesus, but dead to your sin, dead to your doubt, dead to your pain, dead to your unbelief, and start believing. If he's walking with me, I can cast out devils. I can lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. I don't have to do this by myself. He's with me. But that speaking in tongue stuff is weird. If you can sit there and be entertained by devils, won't you come be entertained by the Holy Ghost? Won't you get around some more speaking in tongues until it jumps on you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So here's this man, as if seven, if seven, if seven weren't bad enough. 
There's a man called Legion. He's in the tomb. He's in the mountain areas. He's in the sepulchers. They were scared of him and locked up at night. And, and, and when they tried to chain him up, he broke it. And fetters, he broke them and, and, and growled like a beast and howled at the moon. And he was possessed by devils. Now, in America, once we called him Legion, we would assign him some prescriptions, help him get housing and a car and a phone and give him food stamps and say, we'll help you on through this, Legion, Mr. Legion. And pet our devils. But the Lord said, I didn't call you to pet devils. I called you to remove devils. I called you to expel devils. I called you to reject devils. Even the ones that get in your ear and say you ought to do this. Don't you really feel like doing that? Wouldn't you have more pleasure if you rolled over this morning? I reject you, devil. I reject your word. You are a liar and the chief of it. You've got nothing in me. And then he came running. As soon as Jesus' foot hit the shore, spirit realm on that, on that little territorial place where them legions had principality and power, suddenly said, whoa, someone greater than us is here. And that man where the devils were, he must have heard, he must have heard the legion having a conversation in his head. They said, oh no, it's him. He's here. That man said, if he's here, they'll have to go. I heard he could cast out devils. Let me run to him. Let me get to Jesus. Let me get to the score. If they're scared of him, he'll make them go. And he drug 2,000 devils to Jesus. So what's our problem? I got a head cold, can't go to church. I promise y'all, Sunday, I, last Sunday when I was sick, I was so tempted to get my, get my jammies on and my comforter and come sit on the back row and just chill with y'all. And my shivers and my no strength. I was like, I'm just tempted to give that a shot. And the Holy Ghost said, no, I'll put this on you. You need to rest. I said, okay, I'll rest. So Thursday... When the drums got beaten and the worship started going, I had two services to make up for. So that's why we danced. And that's why we shouted. And that's why we had an incredible move of the Holy Ghost on a Thursday night. But this legion and that fellow said, huh, if y'all are afraid of him, I'm done with y'all. I'm tired of y'all's conversations in my head. I'm going to get you to Jesus, and that's going to be your last day in my head. Then watch what happens. When they get to Jesus, and he, start, he asked them who they were, and they said legion, and the next thing, he's, about, he's thinking to tell them to get out, and they're like, hey, Jesus, uh, can we have a little more time? We don't want to go to the abyss. We don't want to go to outer darkness. Can, can, can we please go into the pigs? They had to submit. And they begged him, can, can we please go to the pigs? It would be better there than the abyss. And Jesus kind of nodded and said, go. And they shot off. Jumped into those pigs and the legions anywhere from 2,000 to 6,000. Nobody knows for exactly sure, but a minimum of 2,000. And those pigs went right off the top of the mountain, hit the water, died and drowned, and the spirits came out. They couldn't take that man's life because it didn't belong to them. He gives breath. He gives life. He breathed into Adam and caused him to be a living soul. He gave life and the devil can't take life away. Death can't come to you unless it's time. 
if 2,000 devils couldn't take a man down, what's our problem? Come on. What's wrong with us? Oh, praise God, I've never had to drag 2,000 demons. I felt like I fought 2,000 demons. But thank God I didn't have to fight through and get through where I was going. And I'm sure that while playing with devils, there were times when they came in and made him strong and he broke chains and he thought, man, this is cool. Look, everybody's afraid of my power. And that's what's being sold to this generation. Look at the power. If I play with the sorcery long enough, if I play with these witches long enough, if I play with these tarot cards long enough, if I play with the Ouija boards long enough, if I get a hold and start looking at the stars and looking to them instead of the Word of God for direction, huh? if I start looking at astronomy, if I start... If I start listening to the spirits and they tell me to do something and it looks powerful and they'll move something across the room because I spoke it, mm, that looks cool. But one day you're going to find yourself in a tomb or a cave screaming at the top of your lungs, get them out of me, get them off me, they're tormenting me, I don't want them anymore. But when you receive the spirit of the living God, he said, I'll give you life and life more abundantly. You can cast out devils. You'll speak with new tongues. You'll be delivered. The sickness will have to go. COVID has to go. I've been praying every day. Let it die, Jesus. It needs to die. COVID, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus Christ. I don't care who made you. I don't care how you were created. You've got to go in the name. Die at the roots. In the name of the Lord Jesus, let the lies stop. Let the lies that are making it great stop. Let them cease. Because the King of Glory said, your time is fulfilled. You're done. The numbers have to stop. The numbers have to go down. Because he said so. The numbers have to go down. Because he said so. You don't give the devil any more power than he needs. You empower him by fear. You empower him when you turn to drugs instead of Jesus. That word in Revelations, when it says that sorceries will abound, and they'll be everywhere, interprets pharmacia. Anybody been to the pharmacy lately? Same word. And while even the church is running to the pharmacy for their next fix, they're fulfilling Scripture. Because before we realize it, we've begun idolatry with pharmacia. It's easier to grab that pill than it is pray. It's easier to grab that pill than it is go let the pastor pray for me and everybody see that I need prayer. Son, let me tell you all something. I'm past what you think about me. If I need healing in my body, I'm going to gather this ministry around. They're going to get some oils and slap it on my head and get rid of this sickness. You can have your pharmacia. Give me Jesus. John chapter 14, 12 through 15. Verily I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, he shall do also, and greater works than these shall he do. Skipping to 15. If ye love me, keep my commandments. If you want to do the works he does, fall in love with his word. Fall in love with his commandments and keep them and guard them and protect them and exercise them. The works I do, you'll do greater. Hear me. I'm not saying I want to see three to seven thousand devils. But, If Jesus said, greater works than these shall I do, I sure ain't going to let one devil scare me. And if he said, I'm going to do greater works, why are you afraid of any devils? The same Jesus 
that spoke to them, if you've been filled with the Holy Ghost speaking in other tongues, He's inside of you. And when you tell the devils to go, it's the very same as if Jesus Himself said, Get out! You're rejected! You're rejected! Matthew 10, 5-8. These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not in the way of the Gentiles and into the city of the Samaritans. Enter ye not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as ye go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick. He commanded them, saying, Heal the sick. Don't be praying for God to heal the sick. He told you to do it. Now, wait a minute. What? He said all power in heaven and earth are in my name. And if his name is on you and his spirit is in you, then he has commanded you to go heal them in his name. You can't do it if you don't have the name. You ain't going to be very successful if you don't have the spirit. But if you have the Spirit in the name, you heal them. You look that sorry sickness in the eyeball and say, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out. Not Jesus, please, Father, I love you. We thank you. Bless you, oh God, please. This woman's been tortured and she's been hurt. And Jesus, if you, if you, if you, want, if you want to, if you, if you like to, you know, if it's, if it's on your agenda today, could you please, would you possibly... And absolutely nothing happens because they were not obeying the commandment. Heal the sick. Devil, you've been talking to her long enough. I command you in the name of Jesus Christ, come out of her. Liberate her. Free her in the name of Jesus. You tell it to go. You lay hands on her. She will recover. He will recover. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead. Well, now they've been embalmed. It's too late. I don't care. I didn't read where it said if they're embalmed, he couldn't raise them. Remember, we got to learn to work with him, not for him. We're busy working for him. We don't get much done because we're going on our own strength. But when we start working with him, the power's there. We start working with him, the direction's there. We start working with him, the name's there. We start working with him. There's abilities you don't have on the earth. It doesn't matter how skilled you are at speaking. It doesn't matter how much knowledge you have. If he's working with you, he'll work for you. He is Emmanuel, God with us. Mark 6, 10 through 13, he said unto them, In what place soever ye enter into an house, there abide until ye depart from that place. And whosoever shall not receive you, nor hear you, when ye depart thence, shake off the dust under your feet for a testimony against them. Would we please stop worrying about our feelings? Some of you will not witness because you're afraid of getting rejected. It ain't about you getting rejected. He said, you tell them. If they'll hear you, baptize them. If they'll hear you, pray for them. If they'll hear you, baptize them. But if not, have a good day. Next. They're not rejecting you. They're rejecting him. They're rejecting his gospel. They're rejecting his word. It's not your word. It's his word. And that's what's going to judge them. Wow. Jesus was tough. They went out hearing that and preached that men should repent. This ain't Alexander Shannara time. You deserve the compensation. You the dummy that saw the steam coming off the top of the cup and decided to put it to your tongue. Why has McDonald's got to pay for your stupidity? 
Now they have to put labels on stuff for the intellectually stupid of us. You use this to cut the hair off your face. Do not put it on your wrist. Something. And you're like, this is for cleaning household germs and toiletries. Please do not drink. What? What? The truth is, we need to repent. America needs to repent. We need to stop justifying sin. We need to repent of our sin. Get away from our sin. Reject the sin and cling to Jesus. Don't justify it. Don't justify it. Well, my mama was a sinner. I'm a sinner. My children will be sinners. No! It stops with me because I'm going to repent. That generational curse has moved from mama to, to grandma, grandma to mama. Now I deal with it. No, I'm done with this. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I plead the blood of Jesus over my life. I refuse alcoholism. I refuse drugs. I refuse anything that's not of my God. Get out of me. In the name of Jesus, I eject and reject the devils out of my bloodline. Don't name it. Don't name it. I joked at my dad when he first got diabetes because in conversations out of habit, he'd just say, my diabetes. My diabetes. And one day I just said, Dad, I love you. Please stop claiming it. I want you to be healed. Please stop claiming it. And then Brother Mocus walked in the building one day and laid hands and by faith, <laughs> diabetes was gone. Diabetes had to leave the building. It had to go. He stopped claiming it, and by faith it was ejected. Now, I can't help what he does with his eating habits after that. <laughs> or me. Or me. Or me. Now, I'm going to slide into, well, aren't y'all glad it's 1235? I just told your stomachs what time it is so reject the grumbling Acts 2 1 through 4 all right let me back up let me back up he said these signs we've been talking about casting out devils because that's what the spirit said we're not done today there's gonna be some devils leave this place generational devils mental devils infirmity devils they've got to go today it's over I said it's over in fact let's do that right now mom I heard in the Holy Ghost Someone said, your body is wearing down. It's running out. Would you come up here, please? It ain't wearing down. It ain't running out. It ain't dying.